Hey, what's up guys? Well, due to popular request and for the fact that I really haven't seen anyone else report on this or write any articles about these lately, today I bring you my first video on SHSH2 blobs. Now in this video, I'm gonna do my best to explain what they are and why you should care. We'll discuss what they're used for, how to save them, and how to use them if you're currently jailbroken on iOS 11 to 11.4.1. .1. Lastly, I'll talk a bit about the new iOS 12 experimental nonce reboot application, and in a follow-up video, very shortly after this one, I will actually perform a demo using Future Restore. <laughs> So welcome to part one of part two. I'm guessing I really have no idea how long this video is going to be. We have a ton of stuff to cover, but I hope you guys find it interesting. And again, I'm trying my best to accurately represent and completely fill you in with what's going on. But just as a fair warning, this video is pretty advanced. So I'm taking it slow and hoping everyone can follow along. Again, most of this is just for demonstration purposes only. I hope you guys can learn something along the way. Now, if you are new to blobs and have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I'd highly suggest to watch this video in its entirety before watching my follow-up one on actually performing the restore, either upgrading or downgrading to an unsigned version of iOS 12. But if you want to skip directly to that, if you kind of know a bit about what's going on, just check out the second video as well. But this one's just a starter video to get everyone caught up and on the same page. Now, I'm mostly playing around with these restores as iOS 12.1.1 and iOS 12.1.2 are still officially being signed by Apple. So if anything goes wrong, I can just officially restore through iTunes. So that's really why I've been taking this opportunity to learn as much as possible about restoring with blobs and using future restore. But that being the case, these firmwares can stop being signed at any point now. And if you decide to upgrade or downgrade after these two firmwares are no longer being signed, do it at your own risk because you may be forced to update to the latest version of iOS 12 if your restore fails. And again, this video is mainly for demonstration purposes only and for users interested in SHSH2 blobs. And just as a fair warning and kind of lastly wrapping things up, I'm just a YouTuber, guys. I'm not the developer of these tools. If there's a better way to do this process or if I slightly misspeak, please by all means kindly let me know so I can learn too. Okay, well starting out with the basics of blobs. So in short, SHSH2 blobs, if you save them, they can be used to restore your iOS device to an unsigned version of iOS. Now very quickly, let's just go over the process of saving blobs so everyone is on the same page. Basically, you're going to head to this site. The link will be down below in this video's description or in your cards now. Now the only thing we need is our iPhone's ECID. So go ahead and connect your iPhone to your computer within iTunes and within the iPhone summary page right here. If we just click on serial number twice, we have our ECID number. And in just a second, we're gonna need our model identifier. Mine is iPhone 106, meaning it's the GSM version of the iPhone 10. So once we're here, we can just paste in our ECID and then again, select our identifier. Mine is iPhone 106. Select yours accordingly. Select I'm not a robot go through this little process right here of selecting a storefront and then click submit and it will take you to here and then you'll be presented with your blob. Now, if you're brand new to this, you're only gonna have your blob saved for iOS 12.1.1, 12.1.2 and 12.1.3 if you are watching this video recently after it was posted as these three firmwares are still currently being signed by Apple. And that is going to be the make or break in this video and in the follow-up video if you guys have your blob saved or not. As you guys can see, I started saving my blobs all the way back when iOS 11.2 was currently being signed. Granted, as we'll talk about later in this video, all of my blobs for iOS 11.2 to 11.4 are completely useless now. We can no longer downgrade to iOS 11 but my iOS 12.0.1 and 12.1 blobs right here are very useful because these two firmwares are no longer being signed by Apple, but with this tutorial process, we'll be able to use Future Restore to downgrade to one of these firmwares right here, even though they are no longer being signed by Apple. 
And if you guys already had your blob saved and you just want to get your download link, you can actually go to recover SHSH link right here, type in your ECID and click get your blobs and it will take you directly to this page too. And again, to download them, you can just click download right there. All right, well, let's get back to this video. Now it's a great idea to save your blobs and kind of the reason why they were created in the first place is so you can remain on an older jailbroken version of iOS like iOS 11 to 11.4.1 now and wait and stay there until a jailbreak comes out in this case for iOS 12 and you can upgrade at a later date regardless if the jailbreakable version of iOS 12 kind of in this case being iOS 12 to 12.1.2, regardless if those firmwares are being signed, you'll still be able to upgrade your device to iOS 12 at a later date. So as long as a few conditions remain true. Now this is mainly where SCP comes into play. The SCP or Secure Enclave processor has to be compatible with the version of iOS you're attempting to restore to. And as of recording this video, the SCP for iOS 12.1.3, as well as the iOS 12.2 betas, are completely compatible with all versions of iOS 12. Meaning we can use our blobs to restore to any version of iOS 12 ranging from iOS 12.0 all the way to 12.1.3 as of recording this video. Now I'm sure many people are wondering at this point in time, can I use blobs to downgrade from iOS 12 to 11.4.1? And unfortunately, the answer is most likely no. If you have an older device like an iPhone 5S or an iPhone 6, the answer is actually yes. But if you have anything newer, unfortunately, the SEP for iOS 11 on the newer devices only is incompatible with that of iOS 12, meaning it's impossible to use blobs to restore to any version of iOS 11, regardless if you're upgrading, say from iOS 11.3.1 to 11.4.1, or if you're downgrading from iOS 12 to 11.4.1. It doesn't matter which version of iOS you're currently running on your device, it matters which iOS version you're attempting to restore to. If the currently signed SCP is not the same as the one that you're trying to restore to, the restore will fail within future restore. The SCP of a currently signed version of iOS has to be the same or compatible with that of the iOS version that you're trying to restore to. And this compatibility can easily be found on the R Jailbreak subreddit. Users often give updates when new iOS versions are released, noting if the new SCP is the same or not. And as an example, when iOS 12.1.4 or iOS 12.2 is released, the SCP could change and be incompatible for iOS 12.0 to 12.1.3. Now in this theoretical case, if that were to actually happen, that would eventually make restores to iOS 12 to 12.1.3 impossible even using this method. But so far, the 12.2 betas have the exact same SCP, suggesting future restores will be safe for some time. Okay, so is anyone confused yet? Um, that basically covers what blobs are used for and who would typically use them. All right, so let's end off this video and kind of recap what I talked about a little bit, summarizing everything and kind of explaining exactly where the second part of this video is going. So basically, the first and foremost thing that you need, you need to save your blobs to be able to use them later. So definitely save your blobs like we talked about earlier in this video. If you're jailbroken on iOS 11 to 11.4.1, .1, I would suggest to use the uncovered jailbreak. And that is because directly within the uncovered jailbreak, you can actually set your boot knots. And that is where we will use our blobs. Basically within your blobs, there's a boot nonce or a generator, which you can type in right here. And then you can use your blobs directly by using future restore on Mac and Windows. But setting your generator or setting your boot nonce is an absolute must for this process to work. Now, that is why typically blobs are used for upgrading from an older iOS version that is already jailbroken. In this case, iOS 11 to 11.4.1 .1 now. You guys can use Electra or Uncover. It's a lot easier in Uncover to set your boot nonce right here. And then you'll directly be able to just jump in on the computer and use Future Restore. Now in contrast, if your phone is not jailbroken, so for users on iOS 12, we'll use this example, 
um, you have to have something that's referred to as a nonce setter, or in this case, nonce reboot. Yu Meng just released this project he whipped up. It is an experimental build. It basically uses Pwn's old nonce reboot program with Brandon Azad's new exploit, which again supports iOS 12 to 12.1.2. It may or may not work on all devices, so exercise caution. Well, with this program, that basically gives users on iOS 12 or users that aren't jailbroken the ability to set their boot knots. And again, like I said, that is required, and you guys will understand later in the second video of exactly why that is needed. But with your boot nonce set, either by using Electra or by using this new nonce reboot setter right here, um, we'll be able to use Future Restore to take advantage of our blobs on iOS 12.0. I don't know why mine didn't save for 12.0, but in my case, iOS 12.0.1, we'll be able to use all of our blobs for iOS 12, basically. So as long as we're on iOS 12.0 to 12.1.2, we'll be able to use this program right here to then restore to any of these versions. And some of them, like 12.0.1 and 12.1, are no longer being signed by Apple. And in the very near future, iOS 12.1.1 and iOS 12.1.2 are also no longer going to be signed by Apple. So if you guys ever wanted to just do a fresh restore, this tutorial would also be applicable. Anyway, guys, that is where this video is heading. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick overview of what blobs are, how to save them, what they're used for, who typically uses them, and kind of a sneak peek of an awesome new project by Yu Ming. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this quick video. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon for part two. But until next time, this is Tony signing out.